think two, two kinds of benefits can come from meetings like this. One is that uh, people from both countries get to hear what's on the minds of their counterparts. Uh, if you like, you get established a, uh, an agenda or a set of topics um, uh, that uh, are of mutual interest. Uh, Australians come to this knowing some of the things on their minds, but they don't necessarily know what's on the minds of the Indonesians and vice versa. So that's, uh, that's one benefit. Uh, the other benefit is when Australians and Indonesians who aren't routinely part of um, the grand discourse that goes on between uh, our two countries get brought into it. Mm -hmm. So there's members of parliament that are here for the first time, uh, business people that are coming to uh, an exercise like this for the first time, and I think that's uh, really terrific for them, but it's also uh, really valuable for seasoned diplomats and other sorts of represent representatives to hear what these fresh voices have to say about uh, uh, the relationship. Well, there's a number of interesting developments there. Um, something that uh, not all, not that many Australians won't be conscious of is just how much uh, Indonesia and Australia uh, collaborate quite closely in diplomatic terms. Uh, in the region and in global forums. We compare notes, we share strategies, not on everything, uh, but on many things, uh, including how we're going to behave in some major international forums, such as the G20 in particular, uh, East Asia Summit, APEC, sometimes UN. Uh, we can be uh, uh, increasingly helpful to each other in diplomatic terms. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's one point to highlight. The other is that um, uh, Australians are all conscious of the discussion going on about uh, uh, what the rise of China means. Uh, and uh, I suspect most Australians aren't aware that there's similar policy dilemmas exist for a whole range of other countries in the region, including Indonesia. Um, just like Australia, mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia on the one hand uh, has a booming economic relationship with China, uh, and on the other hand, doesn't want to see um, uh, what uh, some people here call Pax Sinica uh, uh, come to pass, in other words, a region that's dominated by China. Uh, so they face the same core strategic dilemmas uh, that we face. Another interesting thing coming out of this uh, uh, discussion today um, is that there a reminder that the Indonesian and Australian economies for all the many differences between these two countries, um, share some significant similarities, and that is for both of us, the natural resource sector is hugely important. Uh, for both of us, there's a, a minerals and resources more broadly, um, uh, there's booms going on in those sectors. Uh, it's heavily related to China. Um, and this came out in discussion earlier today, um, uh, partly because there's this mining boom and other natural resources booming as well. Uh, in both countries you've seen the uh, urgency of more economic reform um, <coughs> decline. There's just less commitment to mm. increasing productivity, to taking hard decisions on economic reform mm. um, uh, than would otherwise be the case. And it's this, it's this big natural resources boom that's going on. The old saying, <coughs> that um, hard times breeds good policy uh, is very true. And when you've got big boom conditions going on, uh, people get a bit too comfortable. Um, uh, and the, yeah, the, the sense of urgency about economic reform declines. Indonesia has uh, something of a, insurance policy is the wrong metaphor, but a, a saving grace for Indonesia, a partial saving grace as for Australia, uh, is this natural resources boom. In fact, that there's this gigantic demand coming out of China mm. for minerals and oil and gas and timber. Um, so that's great news for Indonesia, as it is uh, as it is for us. But beyond that, uh, Indonesia's not actually doing anywhere near as, as much as it should be doing. Um, and the same is true for Australia mm. Mm. Uh, in pushing through reforms that are going to increase productivity, because. Uh, if we do see, uh, uh, to use your term, a double dip uh, uh, pat 
happen. Uh, if we do see demand from China go down, then there's nothing much else going on. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the other exciting thing in the Indonesian economy at the moment, beyond this big resources sector, um, and be of interest for uh, some of your readership, uh, is what's going on in the in the new media sector in Indonesia. And we've heard a little bit about that today. But there's all kinds of innovation going on uh, uh, in Indonesia. In Indonesia is one of the um, uh, most extensive users of things like Twitter and other uh, other social media. It's just going like wildfire mm -hmm. um, uh, through young society here. Um, and all sorts of businesses are uh, making money on it. Mm. Uh, developing uh, either software or other, other sorts of things. Uh, and so that, that's quite an interesting source of innovation. Mm. But it, it's it's not a giant sector. Mm. But we don't normally think about that in Indonesia, so it's interesting to, to discover that going on. Mm. Mm. 